Hi, Josh Garrett from jgarrett.info here. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick demo uh, today on how to split up audio signals from plugins that have multiple audio outputs. So some examples of these are the D16 uh, Drumazon, which I'm using for this demo, as well as uh, Native Instruments uh, Contact Sampler. Uh, so basically what these do is that in addition to having uh, maybe a stereo pair or a standard output um, that everything defaults to, uh, they also have additional outputs that you can route signals to for um, splitting things out and uh, uh, affecting independent sounds or sounds independently of each other. So I've got one track here with an instance of Drumazon in it. Uh, if you're not familiar with Drumazon, it's the 909 emulator from D16. And so you can see it's got a uh, bass drum, snare drum, toms, uh, rim shot, etc. Uh, so I've got a clip here that I've created uh, where I'm just sequencing it with MIDI notes. And let me start that so you can hear what I've got. So right now you can hear that it's all in um, mono. So if I use the pan, all the sounds pan together. So everything's basically in mono or stereo mono. Um, and if I want to affect anything, they're all going to be affected together. So I have some options for, for dealing with this. And that's a setting within the, um, the drum machine itself, which here it says output number at the top of each uh, drum section. So I'm going to want to split these out. So I'm going to set my bass drum to two. So just click on it and uh, lift my mouse up or uh, move my mouse up to increase the number. Snare drum I'll set to three. I'm not using the toms in this pattern, so I'll leave them as is. Rim I'll set to four. Uh, my clap I'll set to five. I'm going to separate all this stuff out. And then my hi-hats I'll set to six. Um, just as a in, in piece of information, I guess, uh, the drum is on has uh, 12 independent outputs. So you can actually split things up into 12 different output channels. Okay, so now if I run it, you can see it's going, but we're not hearing anything. And that's because I've sent the uh, signals out to separate channels other than the main one uh, where they're coming through a, a single sort of mono stereo pair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an audio track. And I'm going to enable my I.O. so I can see uh, my signal routing. Right now it's set to external in. Instead of that, I want to use Drumazon. So it's going to monitor this channel. And then the next pull down shows where it's tapping into the signal. So right now it's post mixer, which means it's going to pick up anything um, from this channel after, this, uh, after the uh, pan and after the uh, uh, VU levels are um, the main levels for the track here, uh, where the VU meter shows. Um, now this is called a tap point because you can actually tap into different parts of the signal route um, in the track that you're monitoring. Uh, it, it's referred to under a few different names in the manual. Uh, tap point is used in a couple places and that's usually what I use to refer to it by. So I'll just click that and you can see that there are some signals coming in through some of these other DR numbers. So if I do DR2 and I say in, that's our kick drum. So this track is now monitoring my kick drum. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another track, and I'm going to do basically do the same thing, except that I'm going to monitor the next DR number and set in. So there's my snare, and I can rename these two. So I can like kick, snare, okay, and then uh, keep going here. So now we want DR4. And that's our rim. And we're going to drum is on. DR5. That's our clap. And the next one will be hi-hats. So I might as well name it. Again, select drum is on. And then set the tap points to DR6, which is what the hats are set to. And monitor it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to group all this just to sort of keep it organized. So if I was working on a track, I might want all the drums in a single track that uh, I can expand to see everything, um, but maybe I want to close it down so it's not taking up a whole lot of real estate on screen. So to do that, I select all of these. I hit Command G or Control G on uh, Windows. Okay, and now I have a group, 
And what's interesting here is you can see that the output of each of these uh, tracks is set to group. So basically what happens is the MIDI comes into this track, goes into the drum machine plugin here, and then the drums that are being played are going out to separate outputs from the drum machine plugin, which are then being monitored by these tracks. And then the output from these tracks feed back into the group. Okay, so the cool thing here now is that I can affect and mix each of these independently. So I could have a soft kick, kick but the rest of the uh, levels stay up for the other instruments. Maybe I want a slightly quieter snare, and maybe I want to hard pan that left. And I could put the rim somewhere else, maybe uh, a left pan but not hard, and then uh, move the clap over to the right. And the same thing with the hats. So now I have a wider stereo field. Um, I can also do uh, audio inserts for audio effects on these tracks uh, individually. So if I go to my audio effects, maybe I want to uh, put some reverb on the clap. So the rest of it's dry, but we have a nice long tail of uh, reverb on the clap, and maybe I want to have some uh, uh, flange on the uh, hats. I'll bring that back in a little bit. And maybe a little bit of compression on the kick drum, beef it up a little bit. Okay, and then I can compress the entire thing on the group. Bring the level down on the group. Now you see whatever I do with the group affects the mix of everything coming through it. Okay, and then I can also EQ each of these individually, do whatever I need to do uh, within the audio signals uh, without affecting the other instruments. And then when I'm done, I can just collapse the group down, rename it something like 909. And so this will look like a single track within, uh, you know, if I'm working on another track or a song and then expand it out for when I want to edit the uh, individual pieces. So effectively, I've now split out all my audio. I can EQ things, I can affect things independently. I can use sends on each uh, instrument. So that's, uh, that's a good way to split out a uh, third-party audio effect in Ableton Live. So thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate all the feedback from the people who've uh, watched my previous demos. And again, you can find me at info at jgarrett.info or uh, check out my website at jgarrett.info. It's J-G-A-R-R-E-T-T -T dot I-N-F-O. Thanks.